Hi, Madeline here from Sonic Bloom. This time we're going to have a look at the new MIDI tools introduced in Ableton Live 12.1. There are three new transformation MIDI tools for everyone that you can use. So let's dive right in and have a look at the first one, which is called Chop. So I've already created a very simple bass line here. We can just quickly play that. And Chop, as the name suggests, makes it possible to chop the MIDI notes into more MIDI notes. While we already have other options how to achieve this, this MIDI tool has some interesting extra features where we can create things that is not as simple to do with, you know, the shortcuts, for example. So by default, it just simply chops everything into four parts, but we are going to have to make sure that everything that we want is selected. So select either the MIDI notes you want or all of them. You can select everything with Control or Command A, depending on what operating system you're on. And then we can just click Transform to see what we got. So now we've got everything chopped, every MIDI note chopped into equal four parts. And what we can do though right away is we can change the length by changing the variation settings here. So this is basically something that you can't achieve with the shortcuts that easily. So let's try and set this to B16. All right, maybe let's go back to, to 4 as default. And then we've got gaps. So do we want pauses in there? Which doesn't quite work the way you would suspect because if you set it to 1, you can see we've got two gaps now. Because the way it works is after one note, comes a gap now and if you set it to two it's after two notes comes a gap and after three notes comes a gap and so on and so forth depending on you know how many notes we've got as well you can reverse the whole thing as well so the pattern is changed accordingly right and then we also have stretch and so here we've got another row so we can emphasize a certain notes so let's say we emphasize the let's say emphasize the last one and then now we can set the stretch so it changes the note length relative so yeah this is what you can do with chop all right the second midi tool is also a transformation midi tool and it's called glissando and it uses the MPE pitch bend. So this is quite cool because even if you don't have a MIDI controller that is MPE capable, you can still create MPE pitch bend curves with this tool. And so this is helpful because it can create basically like pitch bending from one note into the next, which can be very helpful for bass lines, for example. But I want to show you the whole feature with another example. So I have um, clip with strings here. Not bad, but I would like this to sound more like Bollywood strings. So where I'm basically sliding into the next note. And this can be achieved with the Glissando MIDI transformation tool. And uh, so it only works if you select at least two MIDI notes. And in this case, because I don't want this long MIDI note each pitch bend into the next one, because it's basically two separate halves, I want to select only these two. And then we can either set the start of the pitch bend and the curve with these two dials, or we can also use the display here. So let's try this. Maybe we can set the curve. And by the way, here, if I go up, you can see here the pitch bend info. When we're here in the 
MPE setting and if pitch bend is selected, so I'm going to take those down again so you can actually see what's happening as well. <laughs> This could be quite nice, so you can always kind of just play around with the settings until you've got something that you like. And so for me, like I'm just going to play you the whole thing with what I've done. This is actually a track I made for the free Ableton Live 12 theme set number three. I'm going to just link that. Okay, and the third MIDI tool is also a transformation tool and that is the LFO. It also changes MPE parameters and this can actually affect or use the pitch bend slide or pressure depending on what you set it to. Let's start with the pitch bend. So here we've got a display, but in this case, we can't make any changes in it. It just gives us visual feedback. So let's have a quick listen to what it sounds like without anything changed. This is the same bass sound that I've used for the chop tool. And so here we can change the shape of the oscillation. So you can create kind of like a Leslie effect this way as well. And down below here you can also set different waveforms for the oscillation. So here you can get a square wave. And we could actually, let's take this down again, maybe a bit more even. Here we can set the oscillation amplitude like the amount in semitones and so here you can set the bass amplitude so if you wanted to transpose this basically you can do this so i could just say minus 12 and it'd be an octave deeper right with a change of one semitone and then I could also set this to 12. And now we've got an octave bass, just like that. Okay, let's set this back to the default. Then we also have a triangle. And we've got random. And here, if you click on this, you can just... Uh, create a new random shape and with this one he, we can shift it in the position where it starts and then here we also have the attack and decay for the envelope they're relative to the total length of the oscillation and if you set the attack, for example, to 100%, let's put it back, then this by default basically has to be zero. So they're dependent from each other as well. So that's pitch bent. And then we can also nope, uh, use the slide. And uh, we basically have the same features here as for pitch bent. The only difference is here the amplitude amount is not in semitones.
And of course, like what you're going to hear depends on the preset that you're using. And uh, for it to work at all, it has to be an MPE ready device. So all the live devices are MPE ready by now. But if you're using a plugin, that might not be the case. And then also with the preset, maybe there's nothing basically mapped to the slide or the pressure, for example. So you wouldn't actually hear any changes and then you could go into the preset and make changes accordingly. And these are also mappable again. And so yeah, you could... Um, MPE curves this way, especially helpful if you do not have a MIDI controller that does this. And uh, keep clicking on the wrong one. Uh, pressure also is a possibility. It seems in this case that this is not mapped, but you can see that the parameters are exactly the same. And so I could just go into the preset, um, but I don't want to make the video any longer than necessary. Okay, and while this new feature is not technically one of the MIDI tools, it's definitely a tool for MIDI clips, and that is to be able to filter and select MIDI notes. And so here we can click on the magnifying glass, and then we've got different options, actually. So we've got quite a lot. So let's start with pitch. And so we can just say like, okay, so we want to select everything that is an E in all octaves. And we can also invert the selection. So anything but the E's. And uh, if they're not selected, we can click on select. And I'm just going to undo this. And then we've got time as the next thing. We could also multiple select notes, of course. Then time means that we could select everything, you know, from like the, the beginning, for example, and here like the first sixteenth note, and then repeat this every bar. And now we have the first sixteenth note of every bar selected. We could also just increase this and now you can see that it selected the second one as well and so on and so forth we can also invert the selection again and and then next one is chance so if you've been using the chance parameters uh, in any way then you could filter this way as well so you could say like okay i've set I want to select anything that has a chance setting, say, under 35. And in this case, you can see, okay, well, we haven't any MIDI notes that have a chance setting of under 35 or just 35. Then we can also try different conditions. So just active notes, for example. So here you can see I've actually deactivated certain notes. So if we go active and invert you can see that these are all been deselected so for example if i say like i actually want to activate them again that i could just uh, select them this way really quickly and then press zero to activate them again i'm actually going to undo this another option is here under the conditions of chance anything that has a probability value under 100 percent will be selected and or does it have a velocity deviation at all set? And then the count is, um, so here if we set this to two, um, so for example, every second note selected, we could offset this as well and set it quantized as well. So this way we could set this. And then you can also make changes, like, you know, for example, all, all the notes that I've selected now, I could move didn't intend to do this, so select. And then I could just move them up within the scale and so change the mel melodic pattern e quickly this way. Just gonna change this back. And um, yeah, 
then duration so note duration in this case so between 64th notes and 16th notes for example and just select them or we could go up and say like okay to eighth notes i mean in this case it doesn't really make much sense because it's either everything is selected or nothing but uh, if you have longer or shorter notes this could make sense then scale let's say for example you've been working in a different scale initially and then realized oh no actually i would like to have this in say a major as this track that i've produced so we could check if anything is not in a major is everything in a major so in word is it not in a major no nothing okay good so we could change this as well and then last but not least we also have the velocity that we can use as filtering tool and selection tool so we could say like okay anything that is under 52 of velocity setting would be selected in this case nothing okay but we could invert it again as well so yeah got a lot of different ways how you can filter and select specific nodes to quickly make changes so i think this is quite helpful as well that's it i hope you found this useful if you did don't forget to like share and subscribe and i'll see you next time until then bye